and we're not wizards. We are the best. And also, we're not wizards. Enjoy the show. Bye. <laughs> To another episode of We're Not Wizards. My name's Richard. I'll be your host for it's probably gonna be April, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, I'm thinking kind of April. I don't know how you define April because March kind of went out like it was like snowing here and hailstony here, so you could almost say it went out like a little bit of a line in April. Going into April, we've obviously got April Fool's Day and we've got all that kind of nonsense, um, you know. All that, all, all the kind of the busy stuff. So I suppose we've got kind of Easter coming up, which is kind of a thing. I guess the romance of February is long gone. And so, but I want to maintain the passion. So I thought I was going to bring somebody on who's passionate about miniatures. In fact, you could say, here's a man that put mantic into romantic. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> it's Mr... It's from 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 Mantic Games. It's what you would call the big giant head, the man of the hour. It's Mister Ronnie Renton. Ooh, Hello, Ronnie. Yay! 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 And the crowd, cue the, the crowd, cue the, cue the laughter, cue the audience. Ah, cue, like cue the cue the cue the fireworks and everything like that and stuff like that. Um, first of all, are you are you well? Yeah, we're well, good. Yeah, good. Busy. In a nice way, uh, yeah, we're yeah busy, busy, little too busy, but we'll we'll, we'll deal, deal with that. Um, it's forty eight hours before Kickstarter goes live. I'm recording this, so you know this is when <laughs> the things start dropping and things start happening. Ah, but it's uh, it's a bit like being at the top of a roller coaster, you know. You just like you know you're on the the buggy and click 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 click, and it's taking you all the way yeah. up to the top. And then you kind of get yeah. to the top, you look around, great view, and then and then the joy starts. It feels a bit like that. The January is cleaning up the mess from when, from Christmas, and everyone's coming back. And February is just a miserable grey, for some reason non Aubrey month. Everyone's skinned because they're not paying their Christmas card off. And then March, it starts to just to click, 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 click up we go. And then- I had a see. I had a. I had somebody say to me the reason that people like March so much is because most people get paid round about the last day of the month, so they get paid around about the twenty eighth and the 29th. Yeah. and then they've got to wait through like the twenty ninth, the thirtieth, the thirty first, and then they've got to wait like four or five days until the month begins. So people basically they get paid. Then they start March, and then it's only another roughly an hour, four weeks before they get paid. So people are like feeling a bit kind of flash for the cash and stuff oh, like that. Okay. And that's why okay. they kind of let us. And also, you get the clocks changing and it gets yeah. a little bit warmer. You know, you can go to bed without a vest on if you want. So that's yep. kind of the Turn thing. Turn that heating off. I've got the heating on here, actually. Get it off. Get the heating off. <laughs> Have, um, has, has the thermostat wars finished in your house yet? Are you still kind of fighting between the kind you know of the what? twenty? Different- this was the first. This was the first year where uh, uh, even Kira went. Yeah, okay. You know what? Even I picked up that electricity bills are quite thingy, and I better work out how to do because she only had two settings on the thermostat, which is like twenty eight or off. Yes, and yes. you can have it twenty eight yes. and the windows open. And I'm like, yes. you have a 28, you have a 28, I'm 28. Can't have a 28 and the wind is open. Well, you need to breathe. That's all you do need to breathe. Turn the heating <laughs> off and then you can breathe all you want. So, for those not for those not aware, across the land, and especially in this in this fine country or fine collection of countries that's called the UK, when it gets about to September, October time, is what called the thermostat wars, where regardless of the relationship that anybody is in, there will be one that will constantly be absolutely too warm, and there will be another person who's constantly too cold. And therefore, there will be this argument over whether or not the heating should be at 20 degrees or 21 and a half degrees, or in some cases. So when you sneak out and you go out to the shops, to get the shop and you'll come back and the heating's gone up and it'll be absolutely roasting and it'll yeah. be a case that they've while you've out they've sneaked it up to 21 and a half or 22 degrees yeah. and then when you get it you're constantly walking past and switching the dial 
back. Yeah, I'm just the moving room. the thermostat somewhere else. Just just move it over there. It's and Hive cold. was one of one of these Hive heating things. That was the best thing ever because people were able to control the heating when they were actually away from the. the when they're still in the shops. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. We're not doing. That. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. Um, 2008 was when Mantic Games kind of first came about. Yeah. And in that time scale. In that time scale, in that time, Frame. time scale, time. Who knows? Around then, you've probably, you've probably, seen, you've probably seen a lot. You've probably kind of seen a lot of changes. But f- looking back on where you were then and where you are now, are you, are you kind of content? Are you happy with the direction where things are going at the moment? Can you sit back like Admiral Akbar at the end of Return of the Jedi, knowing that the Death Star's just been blown up, and you can kind of go? Oh, I've done my work. No, you I've know. done my work. I mean, no, um, because every time you you have a bigger year last year, then you reset it. You spend a bit more money, and then you say, "Well, listen, we've we just we've invested a bit more. We've got a few more guys in marketing, and we've got another guy in sales, and so when we've just one more year, and then we'll be then we'll be big enough to pay all our bills, and then another year comes by, and the <laughs> end of the year, you think that something else is a good idea. Let's have a new website. Yeah, let's have a new website. Yeah, okay. <laughs> So then you spend all that money and you have to do it again. And I suspect that it's just the nature of the beast. And if I was content, we wouldn't be where we are. And if I was, if I'm, hopefully, if I'm right, I'm not content for another 10 years. Uh, if I was content, we wouldn't be where we're going to be. We're bigger than we've been. And, and I, I want us to be bigger again. I want us to grow. I think we've got wonderful games. I think we've just got a fa- fantastic fans. I think we've got people that engage with what we're trying to do. You know, it feels like we're trying to just walk a slightly different path, the road less travelled. The team is brilliant. You know, they're passionate. They care about what we do. Um, you know, people from all over, all walks of life. And I, I'm excited by that. And I want to see it grow. Um, so, am I... Is it, a, is it a long way from 2008? Yes, it is. And, and do, does it still feel like a startup? Yes, it does. <laughs> you know, do I feel like we're there? No, not even slightly. And, and I get no perspective. Whatever we did last year, how do we beat it? How do we get bigger? How do we get better? How do we do better products? Mm-hmm. How do we get more people playing our games? <clears throat> that's, that's kind of the nature of the beast, I guess. With you growing the way that you're growing, do you, when you're sourcing talent, is the... Is the interest in the Mantic catalogue as important as somebody's skill set? Because I can imagine at the beginning, yeah, you kind of want people surrounded who have the same level of passion who potentially are going to, when you're starting out, do you mind staying till six o'clock tonight to get this done because we've yeah. just got to get this yeah. range sorted out and stuff like that. And now that you're in the, you know, you're, you know, you're, you're into the point now where it's 15, 15 years. Yeah. When you're Jeez. filling these roles and stuff like that, I don't want to say. When when you're filling these roles now, is it the case of yes, learning the product and being passionate about the product is important, but I need to know I need somebody who I can give a press release to and make sure that they can hit every single kind of place I want them to hit it. Yeah, I think it's. I, I certainly think. You know, the first guys we had that worked with us, the first wave of stats like guys, guys and girls, were that they stayed late. We all stayed late. We worked hard. And that was kind of phase one. And then quite hard for those guys to let go of having kind of like a full view of everything that's going on. And you suddenly have to bring in some more specialists mm. and break it apart. And, and that's like a, quite a phase thing that happens. Um the certain jobs that I think them being a, a, a gamer enthusiast is of no benefit whatsoever, and sometimes it can almost be a, a, a um, can almost get in the way because you know yeah. Sue, who looks after the numbers and tells me whether we've lost money or how much money we've bloody lost this time. And um, <laughs> actually, it's important that the numbers are right, and that's what matters because if we don't have a good, healthy business, we don't have a good, healthy hobby. And if I can't yeah. rely that I'm going to go to the bank account, and there's going to be money in it then, you know, it's game over. Game over, man. So, and actually, I don't want to know what the left arm does with that. It's resin pieces, it's that, it's the costings, those are numbers. I need to just get on with that, and that's brilliant. Then he sliding scales, like the ops guy that we've just brought on, he's come from Rolls-Royce, and he's here to make sure that as we scale up, wow. it's yeah. a, um, it's, so it's a much smaller job than he's ever had, 
but all of a sudden he's back where he was 25 years ago and he's he's you know he's on the he's on the shop floor packing boxes and doing stuff but he's got the experience to help us he's numerous but he's a gamer he's not a war gamer he's a kind of board gamer yeah. but he dabbles and he so he's got some tuition for it and there's two reasons for that firstly when he looks at a Kickstarter that we're doing he looks entirely different than I do yeah because I come as a miniature gamer so what's obvious to me is that it's not that as, it's not as obvious to him and I think yeah. that diversity of views is is really useful you know we've got younger guys and older guys and um, you know the this person and that person and everyone has a slightly different view and then you can try and pick it for as many people as possible now when we did terrain crate three it's unequivocally a war games sci-fi fantasy scenery set you know it's trees yeah, and yeah. so that appeals to who it appeals to and if you don't have that kind of super hardcore urge then it's not you know it's not very interesting for the casual board gamer but when we're doing yeah. a dungeon crawler that we want to appeal to a really wide audience to board gamers that want to go into a little have a dabble with miniature gamers people who just want to have a good dungeon crawler people who want to like dungeon crawler people who play miniature games and want to show their family friends and kids and nieces and nephews what what painting a soldier is and then putting it on a board game and taking them through a, a dungeon crawler then then actually having different people looking at it and feeding back to you is really useful so yeah. I think an empathy with what we do, uh, sympathy towards yeah. what we do. Uh, yeah. But do they need to be hardcore war gamers? No, actually, that's sometimes a danger because we all get into the – we only talk to hardcore war gamers who've been doing it 30 years. And, and, and where's the new blood in that? As a quick aside, when, when you ran the Hellboy campaign, yeah. it was one of the biggest campaigns that you ran – yeah. Um, not as it was almost actually it was it was you know looking at the and I I've, I do I occasionally do research people don't believe I do research but I mean you know I, I I do a lot of I do a lot of I don't do any research but, <clears throat> was there a part of you when Hellboy did so well and even the role playing game like did you know did very well as well yeah was a part of you that went do we chase kind of other IPs because you've got a strong this is what I hear from people that play Mantic yeah yeah. I love the games I love the systems yeah people that hear you know they love they love like say the the explosive dice mechanic yeah you know where if you you know they people love that you know love that kind of mechanic and people love the miniatures and everything like that so when you had the success with something like Hellboy were you was there a little bit of you that we kind of went do we look around at something else or do we just, do we keep steering the ship in the direction that we want to go? So those two things aren't mutually exclusive, Richard. I think we always plan to do licenses. But what we right. also always plan to do was not 27 licenses with any old tat in yeah. any old way. Yeah. What we always decided we were going to do was things that we thought we could have some fun with things yeah. that we thought resonated. So I occasionally I go to these licensing meetings and chat to people and I say, listen, if he doesn't have a sword or a dragon or a hand grenade or a big <laughs> stupid tank, it's probably not for us. There's other people that do those yeah. games, but it's not us. You know, if it doesn't yeah. have fantasy or sci-fi at its core or alternative future, if it doesn't have some what-if aspect to it and it doesn't play into a visual angle you know hellboy right. who doesn't want to play a dungeon crawler with hellboy and so what oh, amazing yeah <laughs> and, and amazing. it builds up and you know mike's art is so visually strong it, it, and it's just a journey into you know a, a fantasy world that's fully sculpted after 30 years it's fully rendered and we get to go and play yeah. in it wow well, who yeah. wouldn't want to do that but yeah, yeah. I'm going to do it on things that I really think we can bring some fun to or will appeal to new people or will appeal to hoary old vets who want to take a different look at it or go and indulge themselves to it. And I think what, you know, what we're able to do now is, and we'll talk more about Dungeon Saga, but I'm making this game because even though I had a gaming company, I didn't have a game to play with my own kids. I yeah. couldn't share my miniature hobby. I ended up playing board games because I could get everyone around that. And I got yes. Dungeon Saga, but I was I was compromising it. I was having to, you know, ad lib it to get it playable with my kids. 
And by the time right. I finish setting it up, they're bored and back on their Xbox. So what I've been yeah. able to do with Dungeon Time is say, I'm going to show you what makes, and they want to roll dice and they want the heroic moments. They want the giant feats. And that you, you get that whether you're just getting started or you've played 20 adventures. Yeah. But you need yeah. things that make the game slick and easy so you're not looking at the rule book all the time. You're not having to refer yeah. to this and that because that's boring. So quick, fun setup that gives you exciting, the, the, the cinematic moments, that's Mantic. Yeah. I can do that with someone else's IP. I can do it with our own. The, the joy of our own is I can be creative. In the other one, I can show people what it is we do and I can I can bring their IP to life in a different way. In terms of the day-to-day, are you able to step back from the business itself? As in, are you able to, are you still very, very hands-on or are you now in the situation where, you, I mean, you mentioned you've got this ops guy uh, from Rolls Royce now. So you're now able to kind of sit, sit back and kind of just not kind of get involved and just let people kind of get on with stuff or do you still like to kind of be involved in it? Well, I, do, I like to be involved the way I like to be involved, but we're not quite there yet because we've had a few changes. People changed you know, after the pandemic. People have been with us five, six years. A couple changed. We got bigger, so we need yeah. to bring some new people in. We also yeah. need to bring people in to grow to the next level. Um, yeah. I think probably this is a year of transition where we're handing over to a new team. And I think I've got a, a going into this year, into, into next year, if this team's with us for the next few years, I think we've got a team that can see us double and double again. We'll need more people, but I know that we'll need more people who are working with me. And I think you know, it only takes a month or two to realize I'm a lunatic. And it's best if you don't let me near anything, <laughs> except I'm going to be near <laughs> everything. So let's have a chat about it when we should have a chat. And I think I've got to be more structured and more further further ahead in the planning rather than yes. going, look, that'll be fun. And when we get there, we'll deal with it. I need to say, no, let's deal with yeah. it now. Let's get ahead. Because, yes. you know, my poor, you know, I've got a studio manager, Matt, that's a, a director of the company. And I said, do I drive you mad? He says, only when you change things late. He says, if you're talking yeah. about it, I know you're talking about it because there's something that's bothering you. Yeah. Tell me early, have the discussion early, and I can turn the ship. But when you land yeah. it on me late, then then <laughs> everyone's working till midnight, and it's hard, and it's and it doesn't come out, it doesn't come out well because it's not thought through, it's not bottomed out. So you know, while we're 24 hours away, 48 hours away from the Kickstarter going live, it's probably live when this is up. But you know, we're here. We've had a run into it. It's been a new team, so we've only had 60 days, but the product's been built. We've tweaked it. Yeah. As always, when it meets a new audience, you have a little bit of back and forth, but it's going to be going. We're going to run it through the event. We've got more things coming, and it's just going to be a very polished, um, sophisticated, slick game, and people are going to enjoy playing it, and it's going to come out to Kickstarter. It's going to come out to retail, and I'm hoping that it's 10 years of Dungeon Saga because it's a beautiful, beautiful game. It's a, it's a wonderful, fun Family time. I'm, you know, kind of referring to it as the monopoly of dungeon crawlers. You know, don't wow. play monopoly. You know, crap. This is it. It's fifty quid. You've got your minis. You've got your things. It's. I want yeah. it in Waterstones, and I want it in Argos, and I want it people to be going. Yeah, this is kind of either the end of my board games journey or the start of my miniature game journey. But it's a lovely product. So I, I need to step back a little. I think as they, everyone gets more confident, we get to know and work with each other more. And we plan a bit yeah. further out. That will come. Certainly hope so. And so that's my intention. And I'm sure that the staff will think, please God, get out of my office. Um, no, I think I think one of the interesting things about the pandemic, and I don't know if it changed, probably did change the way that you guys would have worked as well. But I think um, my uh, my director, he was very. I think he was very good at realizing. He was like, actually, you can you. You're you're not just here for the money. You kind of you want to get the job done and do a good job and stuff like that. So did that? Did the pandemic kind of change the dynamic? Do you still have? Does ever is everyone back in the office now? Are some people still remote? No, yeah, and- I mean, we still definitely we have guys who work in America, so they're never in the office. Um, right. and, and and actually, interestingly, I think I, I always knew people wanted to do well and yeah. um, well for Mantic, and that was you know that was why. I never was that bothered about that. In some ways, the pandemic, because all of a sudden, instead of me being able to plan a year and then, you know, chunk through and get on yeah. to the next year in my time and everything else, um, all of a sudden, 
What are we releasing next month? It's, it's not here. It's not yeah. been made. There's been no staffing yeah. for three months. Okay, you know what? We're having a Walking Dead sale. We have that here. It's people of pandemic. Yeah. It's a very, it's a game that anyone can learn and play. Let's put yeah. the rules up. Let's have a promotion on that. That's what we're going to do. And suddenly our release schedule went out the window. Guys that have been working for us were furloughed because we like, well, they need to be here. We need to keep open, but we, we're not supposed yeah. to have everyone. Okay, right now you get okay. back. Well, wait a second. I normally work three months out. And yeah. actually now I need to work on. And so we're still not three. We're still not back to where we were pre-pandemic on, on, on our marketing. We're still mm-hmm. six weeks, not three months. Yeah. So yeah. I almost, I think it's had us back because I think we were heading into a place and then all of a sudden that changed, shortened. I got more hands on again because you were just having to. You haven't made decisions. Yeah. Stuff's not on the water. Well, let's do this. Yeah. We can't do that. I can't get a new license. Yeah. That's not going to drop. They're not there anymore. Yeah. Everything changed. And then you're slowly putting it back together. And I still know they were back. And, I, and, and that's where, and then I need to be able to go, great, you've got this. That's your quarter. And um, yeah. yeah, take it and run with it. Did it, did it also allow you to kind of widen the talent pool for where you were looking? If you were like saying, well, actually, I can get you remote and I can get you remote and you don't necessarily <sighs> oh, need see, to be yeah. in the Moffat. Yeah. Um, the problem is we're not a big company yeah. and the way you find everything out is by being in the office. Yeah. Okay. So it's informal. There's only, there's only like 28 of us in the whole world. And, um, you know, I spend on a Monday night, I go and play football. And on the way out, I phone my American guy and I say, hi, we had the meeting earlier. Let's yeah. talk about it in detail. Let's go over it again. What it's experiencing yeah. that you've got, what's he got. On the way back, I call the other US guy and have the same conversation one-on-one because you know they don't have that granularity that people just get on with their job. And when they were over, they found out that this game was going to be that price with that spec. And then yeah. all of a sudden, it's now this spec and this price. And they're like, well, what's changed? I've just been telling them, oh, well, we've decided this, we've taken that away, we've made this, this. Oh, okay, that makes sense now. But there's no formal communication methods because we're not sending the same message out to 100 people or 100 shops going, hey, 100 shops, you look after this section and here's what's changed. You know, yeah. it, it's it's informal. We had some minutes, here's where we are. Let's do, let's get that project going. Okay, exciting, done, next. You know, and you know, in our hobby, new releases is kind of an exciting thing. But, you know, getting people to actually start and try our games is the important thing. Not that they're not important, both important, but it's the one that goes, you can get, yeah. you can, you can obsess about new releases. And over the pandemic, that's what we did. And we forgot that going out and going to Adepticon and running 200 demo games is very important for us because that's how yeah. new people find out about Armada and go, I wanted to find out about this. But I want someone to, you know, no one learns to play chess by reading a book, do they? Someone shows them how to no. play chess. And then you go, I like chess. I'll learn how to play it properly. <laughs> let's let's talk about, let's talk about, look at this, look at this. Let's see. Ooh. I want to see your face. Do you, re- <laughs> do you remember Good this? Song, Adventurous Companion. That's the hardback book, is it? The hardback yeah. book that came with the Dungeon Saga kicks. Because I, I, I thought, I've got this on the shelf, so I'm gonna, I'll bring this out. Let's talk about Dungeon Sad. Look at his little face. His little cups all filled with joy. Look at that there smile. There we go. Because his face went radio. Just, yeah, I'm I not know. smiling. For the, for the audience, I've, hold, I've held up a copy of the hardback copy of the Dungeon Saga Adventurer's Companion that came with the Dungeon Saga um, Kickstarter. Twice, I think, actually. Yes, because I think <laughs> we, 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 we printed it all wrong the first time with, with XXX and all the numbers. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> For the page numbers. Yeah. Oh, I remember that. Oh, no, I think we should have just it's... left it. I think we could have just like, let, here's the answers. Go colour them in part. yourself. I think we ever did it. Exactly. We spent a fortune it, getting things wrong in those days. I think nowadays <laughs> I'd be like, ah, you know what? It's the answer to the character is a Kickstarter. But actually, we just don't Go make those line. mistakes anymore. Go online, you can find something called an errata on yeah, BGG. Yeah, it's, it's stick in your book, page your pages. But there we go. In those days, we, we, uh, we were too damn uh, enthusiastic and lunatic. And we were, you know, right, we were making these up during the campaigns. You know, we were like, yeah, that'd be cool. Let's do that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we need to do so, that now. So with Dungeon Saga Origins, let's talk about that. Yeah. Okay. First of all, and... When you're questioning the existence of anything at all, the que- the first question is obviously why. 
Yep. Why go back after this time? Yeah. To revisit kind of dungeon the dungeon saga kind of universe, I would guess. Yeah, well, two two well, two two reasons for this. I think firstly, we never left it. You know, the right. problem was it had aged. So we've reprinted right. Dungeon Saga ten times, twelve times. It's been in French, it's been in German, it's been in Spanish. Um, we loved it. But when you and you know, in the olden days, kind of people forgave you for a bit of bendy plastics, you know, and for rule books with no page numbers in them and things like that. Um, and we corrected a few of those things, but we always wanted to add more adventures and, and play this game more. And if you you know go back and look in 2009, we had, you know, uh, the Dwarf King's Quest and then Dungeon Saga came out, yeah. Dungeon Saga Dwarf King's Quest. The first one was hard plastic. It was just a little 400 print run um, game. Then we did this one. And so it came for the last few years where, and we probably would have done it sooner had it not been for the pandemic, but the pandemic meant everything else changed. And so we just shuffled along and everything kind of just got delayed a year. But um, we always wanted to do it, but I could not in any more conscience, in any longer conscience, reprint Dungeon Saga anymore. Because I just don't think the quality mm -hmm. of the product we were doing was right. I think the way things would, we could write the rules slicker, uh, easier to understand. We could configure it so the plastics were just, you know, look at the Walking Dead, look at the Hellboy plastics. They're knockout. They're absolutely brilliant. You know, the yeah. Hellboy stuff, we did them in resin. And sometimes we thought, why have we done this in resin? Because yeah. you could paint this up and it looks amazing. It's got all the detail. Yeah. It's all there. Because we learned how to sculpt digitally. We'd learn how to put them in a position so that the tooling lines, you'll never see them. The mold lines are hidden. There's so much tech that goes into making those. And we're a miniatures company, so the miniatures need to be good. So we, it was, but we, I wanted I absolutely want and love dungeon crawlers and we're never going to go away from this. We're going to keep doing more of them. And we will give you yeah. the adventurous companion for dungeon saga origins at some point. I don't know. There'll be another Kickstarter or it will be this or a release yeah. that says, here's how you level up. Here's how you build a character. Here's how you take them to adventures. But I couldn't, I couldn't do any of that stuff with the slightly flawed rough diamond that we had with dungeon saga. So yeah. what I've got to do is go, that was this. We loved it. It was brilliant. But actually, we need to rebuild this house from the ground up, starting on concrete. And the concrete has to be, look at the rules, look at the components, and make yeah. sure every single one of them is 10 out of 10, or in some cases, 11 out of 10. And was, there any, was there any kind of precious babies that you had to throw out yeah, with all the, the time. bath water? Sure, all the time. Fight, yeah, I mean, this is like, interesting. Oh, I really like this. I just, so I'll give you a example. And I think, I think, before we go on, the second thing why I did it was I'd been through the pandemic. I wanted to play book. Okay, so when I started playing with Toy Story, when I first started playing, I was like five years old and I used to set them up, piao, piao, and I never stopped. Yeah. You know, the imagination yeah. was what it was for me. And I started with Napoleonics. As soon as I found out of the War Games Club, I went and started playing Napoleonics. Then I went on to um, World War II and then I discovered Citadel Miniatures and bang, that was it. I had a pre-order in for the first Warhammer before Warhammer was released. I had a pre-order for it. You know, it arrived mm. on my doorstep the day it was released. So I've been in this hobby forever and I've, I've always played it like, hey, I'm one of the young guys. This is a new emerging hobby. And then I look around and realize I've got some 12-year-old kids and I haven't got a game yeah. I can play with them. Yeah. And when I set up Dungeon Saga, it took me half an hour to set it up. And what they want is cinematic moments. What they want is the barbarian coming, swinging his axe. And I hadn't got that game. And that's kind of embarrassing when you've got a gaming company and your whole yeah. point is to be inclusive and to open it up as wide as possible. And in the pandemic, I don't have a game I can play with. Now, as Rave got a bit older, he started playing Walking Dead with me and he played Dead Zone with me because he had that gene. But mm. in that board game space, we ended up playing Ticket to Ride in the pandemic because yeah. we didn't have that game that people could approach pop out the box and play. So the second thing was, I really wanted to put that wrong right. I wanted to make sure that if you are a bit of a war gamer and you want to show yeah. someone why painting a soldier and rolling some dice is good fun, they're not going to do it with 40K and they're not going to do it with Kings of War. They're yeah. not even going to do it with Dead Zone. Yeah. You need something that is a lovely crossover, one foot in both camps, that's just a joy to be taken at face value, pop these things out, I can move them, I can roll. What's in the treasure chest? Does that help me in yeah. the next fight? Decision-making, yeah. cinematic moments that are all on the card and unravel, the best of a card game, 
but the miniatures, the, the terrain gives you a visuality that you don't get. You have to abstract that with Ticket to Ride. You know, the trains are, are not what you're seeing. Whereas this is, I'm a dwarf, there's a zombie. I'm an elf yeah. ranger, I'm going to shoot it. I'm going to come over and hit it. We're working collaboratively to, to play against this. So those are the two reasons that were um, why we had to do it. One, we're going to have a dungeon crawler and a sci-fi dungeon crawler and a Hellboy dungeon crawler because we love dungeon crawlers. And actually, I wanted to make the game that everybody can play, whether you're a war gamer coming backwards or mm-hmm. going deeper into where we're going or just want a, a fun evening. One of the things I've noticed, kind of, and I spoke about this in the, in the I think, in the last episode, um, with um, with Justin, was that there seems to be a big push for having really, really big kind of games now. Yeah, I've got you know Frost Frost Havens down here. Yeah, I've got it's huge. Yeah. I'm not sure when I'm going to get it to the table. I'm going to play about with it and muck about with it and stuff like that. But it's kind of like it's like um, it's like cutting the grass for the first time that year. Yeah. I know I've got to do it eventually. Yeah. I know it's going to be an awful lot of hard work. Yeah. I know once it's done, it's going to probably look amazing. Mm. But it's kind of like that first. And it's kind of like that first kind of yeah. step, isn't it? Um. With there being things like Gloomhaven and Frosthaven and Oathsworn and stuff like that, was there any part of you that kind of like said, did you fight against kind of making the uh, the Dungeon Saga's origin system a little bit more complicated nope. or were you trying, you did your head on rails and <laughs> no, just say, no, no let's, no. we want to do this. I, I, when, when I did the first one, the book that you held up there was the book I knew we needed to make but didn't want to make. And I wanted to yeah. call it Abandon Hope All Ye Who Enter Here. <laughs> because, and, and, and the reason is that I've, I've sat there in a room where people have gone, I've played Scenario 1 of Dungeon Saga, like in the old Dwarf Kids Quest, 20 times. Because that yeah. one scenario plays differently every single time we played it. Yes. And so then what you do is you do exactly what you said, which is you give it to the mm-hmm. urge of going, can we go deeper? You go, yeah, we write it. Yeah. But because we were writing on the hoof, it wasn't built that way. So here's the DNA of where we're built, and then we built these things on top of it, but you're building it on sandstone. Your previous question was, was there any um, sacred cows? And you went, yeah, I love the pile of bones. If you had a skeleton, but not enough to kill it, pile of bones. Yes. And then they take it out. I said, oh, well, it's so characterful. He said, yeah, but yeah. all it does is slow the game down. Yes. And so you can, if we build it up again, you can say, look, we can put it back in as a tweak. If you want to do this, you can do that. But actually, when you're playing the game, Yes, it seems yes. characterful the first time. The tenth time it happens, and then that guy pops up, but he can't attack you because he just rebuilt, so you're just there fighting a fight that you've already won. Yes. Or leave him up. You haven't hit him hard enough to kill him. You've knocked his arm off. It's all right, he's going to hit you back. So mm. <laughs> think about what you're going to do. So what that was that gameplay and that slickness. But what we've done yeah. is, have we taken anything out? No. What we've done is we've made the, the everything better. And in doing by making it better, by taking out the things that slow the game down, why do you need to bash through doors? Okay, you might do it once at the end of a big adventure when the clock's running, but every door you have to bash in. So it's rolling a dice that, that's, for what? There's no jeopardy to it. So it's just taking yeah. up time. Yeah. Okay, get rid of that. Let's, let, let's, let's put something behind the door that when you open it, it's going to shoot you in the face. Ah, yeah. ah, okay, that's <laughs> exciting. Oh, crumbs, we haven't finished that fight. That idiot's gone through the door, never split the party, yeah. we split the party. Right, now you've got a fight on. Oh, or we were searching because we thought we were through the door and there's a wandering monster. So now there's something behind us. So now our rear arc's under threat. Right, that's fun. Now get them knocked out. Then this is going to happen. Ooh, okay. And that's what we're starting to create. And because you've cleaned down the rules, you can have the fun. You can put the story on top because the rules aren't yeah. getting in the way. And I think that's well, – and then all, now all of a sudden we've got an exploration deck. Because we're not messing yeah. around bashing doors down, rolling unnecessary dice, you've got an exploration deck. And your exploration deck is when monsters pop out, you find some treasure, you find a – okay. Yeah. So um, – you, um, you sound – you sound – I was warned – you were a fairly passionate <laughs> kind of gentleman to deal with. But I mean, the animation's kind of there. So is it at the moment, is it giving you kind of like 
jumping out. Are you okay? Are you looking forward to the Kickstarter campaign? Yeah, I am. I am. I am. And, I, and actually, it was that question you said, did you want to go dark? I said, no, I don't. I didn't want to go crunchy. I wanted to make it absolutely a joy, a pleasure. What I want to yeah. give you is 100 miniatures, 88 miniatures, I think you get. Yeah. And I give you 40 quests. Well, sorry, you get 40 quests. You're going to meet the right. undead because you've got to start with the undead. Here they are, yeah. re-sculpted. Here's the zombie troll. Here's the kind of old classics, the revenants, the zombies. Because why as well? When it's a retail game, People could pick this up and go, well, I know what Skeleton is. I know what Skeleton Archer yeah. is. I know what a zombie is. I've seen a zombie troll in Lord of the Rings 20 years ago. Oh, you know what, yeah. kids? Should we do this? Hey, I could take this and play with my nieces and nephews. Okay, I can tackle this. This is this is I get. After the undead, you get the, um, you get the goblins because, hey, how can you not do goblins next? You know, they've got huge weapons. There's a little bit of humour <laughs> there. They're at the other end of the scale from the undead, the darkness, but they're... They're green. Here we go. What great fun. Um, and then, okay, now Abyssal Dwarves. Ooh, baddie dwarves. So we picked dwarves. They're Abyssal Dwarves. Now they're a little bit mantic. They're a bit panathor. But everyone still knows they're dwarves and they're evil. And then yeah. there's elves. Bad. Okay, Twilight Kin. So now we're introducing your little bits into panathor. We're introducing your little bit into those. And those are, in each scenarios, one to ten undead. Uh, the second chapter, if you like, is the goblins. Then your third and fourth, you can play whichever way you want, you know, they're, because they're equally tough. You have choices about which equipment you take. And then and then we've got some big finales that will be unveiled in the Kickstarter. But here's a wonderful big box of joy that it's going to be as big and as beautiful, well, more beautiful, obviously, because the minis will be much better than Gloomhaven. But I think it's not. It's going to be the fifth mo of the year, and you're just skimming it off, and you're skimming it off, and you're just going to go Tuesday. Who wants to play? Who wants to play? And that's what yeah. we're going for. We've purposely gone. You're just going to want to keep playing this. Is you, you don't change chess every time you play it. You don't change backgammon. Yeah. The joy of it is, I know the yeah. rules. It's my opponent, and it's my dice, and it's my decisions. There you go. I've got you forty adventures. I've got you nearly a hundred miniatures. You're going to make different monsters. You're going to make different decisions. You're going to have different equipment. You're going to go in a different order. You're going to play it with different people. And every single one of these experiences will be unique and it will be memorable and it will be fun. Not unless you die. How, how, are you, how are you handling stretch goals? Because one of the things, if you want to irk me in a Kickstarter campaign, is to almost say, right, here's your cup, right? Your coffee's a stretch goal. Your milk's a stretch goal. Guess what? The sugar's a stretch goal. But the spoon and the hot water, they're an add-on. So was your approach to this campaign, How are, are there going to be kind of the add-on things that people can buy? Is there going to be, are you looking at lots of stretch goals? Are you just saying, look, here's a box of fun? So we're going to treat you, like, you know, like, like we've done, never done this before. And if you don't give me more money, I'm not going to unlock this thing. No, I'm not. I'm going to treat you like yeah. a grown-up, and I'm going to say, in this box is a core game that would normally sell for, let's say, 50, 60 quid, and yeah. then three more chapters, three more full and complete expansions with the tile card, with the minis, with mm -hmm. all the things you need, and 10 more quests, you know, and all the writing that goes in it. And from day one, you're going to get all of that. And for that, I'm going to give it to you at less than 50% discount, you know, more than 50% discount in okay. this box. And it's going to run for 16 days. And each day, we're just going to show you something new that we're going to add to your box. Whether we've got one backer, right. a thousand backers or 10,000 backers, I'm just going to put it in the box. And every day I'm going to give you cooler, more exciting, fun things. And then, so if you like it on day one, you're going to like it 16 bits more on day two, yeah. but I'm going to say, if you've got your coffee cup and you think the coffee cup and the spoon and the hot water are worth it, yes. um, I probably not, I, you're probably not going to have coffee, but I'm going to yeah. give you four different types of sugar and you can put whichever one you want in, but I'm going to give you them all, you know? And if you want a swizzle stick, that's going in. You can pick if you put a swizzle <laughs> stick in or not. If you don't want to play with these Mar four heroes, you can play with those six other ones. Marshmallows? Yeah, definitely. Definitely go down the marshmallows, a little bit of whipped cream. <laughs> Boom, there you are. Whichever way you want to go in it. So, and then, and then we do have we do have some very, very here's how we're dealing add ons. Very interesting. Yeah. So, in that game, you've got everything you need. All you've got, I'm going to add on. Mm -hmm. 
if you back the first Kickstarter, you might have a load of plastic terrain, which means yeah. you can upgrade your car pieces to that plastic terrain. So you don't have to give me any more money for that. Yeah. We do have a GM screen, a little dice mat, and a little tidy up sheet, which is like a like a, a, a neoprene mat where you can put your throwaway cards and everything else. So they're nice to have. You don't need them. And right. there's the terrain for all of the extra scenarios. So you can make your whole gaming table 3D. And we've given you that, again, at 40% of the normal retail price because I can just put it in a box and ship it straight to you. But you don't need yeah. any of that. So that's if you want to add it on, you can. But if you don't, you don't have to because you don't need any of it. It's only for fun and what you want it for. And can you get that stuff later on then? Are you planning to have, like... Because you're already doing your terrain crates anyway. Yes, yeah, so all the terrain crates. Correct. correct. All of that, obviously, is in the terrain crate range. And, uh, you know, and if you just... If you think, well, I've got all the terrain, but I do want the GM screen, I think that'll look cool, and it'll just give me somewhere to keep mm-hmm. on my notes, it's a tenner. That's it. Boom. Done. So, price point, how much is it going to be to actually get yourself involved in this dungeon saga journey? Oh, well, you're going to have to go to the Kickstarter page on Thursday at 3 o'clock and find out. But I think you'll be surprised. I hope. Pleasantly. Oh, he's not. We're not getting the, oh, he's not getting the yeah, price. You're going to have to this. go find out. I think. Yeah. I really do. I couldn't have been any more keen. You know, it, we're covering the VAT. There'll be a little shipping extra in the Avalons, which we'll do when we finally weigh it, but it won't be a lot of money. I want people to play this game. I really want it to just be an absolute slam dunk. I need some help with the tooling. We're still, we're tooling 88 minutes, you know, and yeah. um, I want a print run because if I do a retail set, I know I'm going to sell X thousand of them and I can go to my distributors and I can go, here you are. But I want the yeah. video and I want the magic and I want, I need some help because I'm printing a big box and I need, I need a few people yeah. to get behind me and do it. But yeah. Yeah. after that, all I need is, is, is the help to get it to market and um, I'm, I'm absolutely good to it. So I very much hope that when you go there, you go, bloody hell that is very reasonable that is kind of the mantic on steroids of good value for money yeah i'm in i want you to be blown away by the miniatures when you think about 48 games i think who am i going to play it with and we're going to try and have it delivered to you in december this year see i believed everything <laughs> That you've said. You've said. <laughs> so, so, so you still so can believe me because I'm going to try and have it delivered to you by December this year. But I can't promise it because I said to my guys, and if I could wave a magic wand and promise it, they said, well, we'll do it. We would 100% do it. If you could wave a magic wand, See. I said, so I'm going to promise, I'm going to, we're going to do everything we can. There's certain things that just aren't in our control. They say they've got six week tooling. The day we go live, the day we hit the funding goal, I'm going to switch the tooling on. All the models are over there. The sculpts are there. The tooling designs yeah. are laid out. We go. Yeah. And we've got a timeline, and I'll put it up as a blog sometime next week saying these are the things, these are the gateways, and this is what we're going to keep you updated with. But I'm going to do everything in my power to get this so you can be playing on Boxing Day. And if I can do it, we're going to do it. Can you say the word August for me? August. See, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to edit that. <laughs> <laughs> to say it's going to be with you by yeah, August. It's going to be with you by August. <laughs> August under the <laughs> August tree. August, <laughs> yeah. Under the August tree. And do you mean August twenty twenty four? I'll say that August twenty four. August twenty four. Yes. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. Um, stepping aside from Dungeon Saga Origins for a little bit, because one of the other things. And this is just a quick aside. Um, Armada. Oh, yeah. Ar- what can you tell me about Armada? What, what, uh, I mean, because people are going to go, oh, I've heard of a game called Armada. It's got a, it's got ships, spacey yeah. ships in front of it. Yeah. Oh, um, that one. Yeah, okay. That one. But for people who are checking out Kind of your armada. Yeah, we probably should have called it something different, shouldn't we? No. No. Um, what can they expect? What? Who's it going to be suited for? Who's going to like it? What can they expect when they kind of play it? Yeah. Basically? Okay. So I think if 
I'm going to assume you played a miniatures game. Okay. I yes. think at least one of the group has played a miniatures game. I think I think uh, mum or dad can play with the kids if they're a miniature gamer, you know. And, and, yeah. But um, I'm going to assume this is not your first foray into gaming. But if you like it, you're going to suddenly approach a very slick, very fun game with with. <laughs> kind of joyous rules um, with eight fun fantasy looking fleets. The classic Basileans, big sails, you know, the yeah. orcs smashing into you, the dwarfs heavily armored, slow and lumbering, the elves super light and fast, but glass hammers. Visually, yeah. and I think the first thing that's that's going to be a very strong appeal to any miniature gamer is you've painted a lot of 28 millimeter figures. Right. These are beautiful resin kits, soon to be STLs as well, if you're into that kind of thing. Wow. So you could actually just download them, no problem, because we just want you to enjoy playing. Um, and, and you're going to paint something different and you're going to enjoy painting something different. Even if you don't spend the rest of your life playing this game, on your cabinet that you're going to have, you're going to have your first army and your second army. You're going to have your three or four skirmish squads from your three or four games, your World War II. And then suddenly you're going to have a fleet, a fantasy naval fleet, and you're going <laughs> to enjoy painting it. You're going to love it. It's going to challenge you. How do I do sales? How do I put these details out? Mm -hmm. So I think there's a visual aspect that is wonderful. And then if you do actually go to a gaming table, and you, and you will because it's a lovely game, you're playing on a big, bright blue board. And there's two or three little bits of scenery dotted around. And no matter what, whenever I play it, no matter how small the scenery is, no matter how benign the weather conditions, I still manage to hit the <laughs> island. So I don't know how I do it, but I always do it. I always think, turn left here, oh, bollocks, I meant right. Okay, right, there we are. So um, because what you're trying to do is position yourself to drive your boat through the middle of their fleet and fire yes. your cannons at, their, at the side of their ships and then carry on sailing, waving two fingers up and go, ha, 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 I got you. And when you get that moment, um, uh, you know, it's devastating because that's a broadside. And if you get lucky, you fire both broadsides either side at speed and then you go past them and then they're facing the wrong way and uh, they're in big trouble and you're not. However, it does seem that everything that can conspire to make that not happen and um, that's what happens. <laughs> so, what's the so one thing I forgot to ask is kind of what's what's the kind of entry level price for well, Armada? For, for Armada, so I think there's a there's a two player set, and I think that yes. comes in normally at about eighty five quid. But right now there's twenty five percent off. Right. So you're going to get two, you know, a good chunk of two fleets. You're going to get the Orcs and the Basileans. You're mm -hmm. going to get uh, a fold-out paper map. You're going to get the dice. They're all D10s. You're going to get all mm -hmm. the cards you need for all the boats that are in there. You're going to get a rule book. Yeah. You're going to get all the counters. Uh, you're going to get all the islands you need and everything you need. So you could literally spend that much, you know, 40-odd quid each, not even 35 between you and your mate, and you are playing. You are playing the real thing. It was kind of crazy because we gave too many, because normally those core components are in plastic, but we did it during the lockdown, so we couldn't put anything in plastic because we couldn't get anything out of China. Yeah. So we put yeah. them in and we said, look, you know what? Just get everybody into it and we'll go from there. So so there's that. That said, you can just buy the rule book and take a subscription to our STL that's about to come and you can download all the boats and start printing them. So, right. you know, the digital rule book, and we've got a set that has a big rubber Matt, the rule book, the counters, and something mm. else, so everything you need. And I think that's 30 quid. So you print right. the boats, you play for 30 quid, plus, you know, a little bit of subscription money for a couple of months. So uh, I think a fleet starts at 40, and that's your core fleet. Then you've got a booster and then a couple of add ons. But I don't think you can spend more than £120 to get a complete fleet. And that will give you all the ships you need, all the variety yeah. you need, and yeah. hours of hours and hours of of gaming and painting fun. And, you know, I always do the old, if I was going to a football match, what would that cost? Well, 50, 60 quid plus parking, yeah. plus food and everything else. What does it last yeah. for six hours? Two of which are fun. 
Um, okay, so you're going to have this forever. It's going to be there. And it's you know it's joy to pain. But I think you know you can and and you presumably with some of the online retailers you'll get discounts off that. Or if you're a gaming club member or whatever else there's there. So we do you know work hard to make it as affordable as possible. It's all hand cast resin. It's all made in the UK. You know, it's made by you know our team of four in our bungalow. bungalow pouring resin into I'm, silicon handmade silicon molds <laughs> so um i'm gonna i'm gonna say if you're anywhere near where i live uh there's a a, a shop called accent gaming in dunfermline town oh, yes, the absolutely. guys had the shop yeah the guys the guys had the shop for a, probably about six to eight months now yeah um he does the entire range kind of he does kings of war he does dread ball he um he does. He basically yep. does the entire kind of Mantic range. Um, if you're in there, and he also does some really, really good prices. He doesn't know I was going to mention him. There you go. Very nice. But I just thought. Give I just plug. thought I'd, I'd mention him. Mention him out the way because it's done like, just across the river from Edinburgh. Yes, it is. I went to that just store. North. And there's a Did famous you? church there. Yes, there's the yeah, there's the yeah, there's the the abbeys there. Yeah, where Robert the Bruce was. Yeah, Robert the Bruce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my daughter studies in Edinburgh, and when I dropped her off, I said, "Right, there's a new gaming <laughs> store that's just opened up round the corner, <laughs> and uh, let's let's pop up and say hello to him." And he's a lovely guy. Hi, well done for your plug. It's Paul. Beautiful yeah. store on the corner with all the glass. Uh, oh yeah, it's, yeah, it's ye old it's ye old it's, it's the old kind of cobbled streets and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, well. so it's a beautiful store. Old. Go visit it. Go buy your mantic stuff from. Uh, Paul at Action Games, wonderful. There you go. There you go. Um, when you mention painting, yeah, is there particular paints that you kind of go to? Because, uh, because, um, I've always been tempted to paint. I'm a bit of a drawy right. type artist. I know how yeah. to draw and stuff like that. But I've never. Uh, the last time I painted was like Hero Quest okay. years ago, and it was like yeah. literally I ended up. You know, the barbarian looked like he had googly eyes because it was yeah. like literally two never big paint the eyes. blobs. Like, never paint the eyes. eyes. Never, never paint the eyes. I didn't know that at the time. Yeah, but is there paints that, I've got plenty of those. Is there paint, paints that you would kind of recommend that you would say people should consider kind of... Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of good paint out there. I think there's... Really so, I mean, I, I know personally the Army Painter guys, Joe and Bonus, who are great friends of mine. I work with them back in the day. Mm. So, you know, well, well, obviously they uh, are kind enough to send me a batch of their stuff. So um, <laughs> the fact I don't pay very often and I don't have to pay for my paints means I'm definitely going to give them a plug. Thanks, Jonas and Bo. Or <laughs> thanks, Bo, these days. So the only paint of stuff. But there's some, there's some I've worked with, with Vallejo, I've paid with, you know, the, the Citadel stuff in the day, Citadel colour. Yeah. There's, there's some great paints out there. We, we're working with... Um, Scale seventy five. There's there's some great companies, and we do collaborations with lots of them. We've done something with Vallejo. We've done something with mm. the um, the other guys. So we do. Um, the, the, and I think I, I'd love to be able to use an airbrush because I think it would make my life easier. But I've got no idea. I've not got the manual dexterity. I'm just I not, would just like I would really. end up. Yeah, I would end up looking like I've put on blusher. Yeah, I would too. And eyes. also, I would have smashed something, and there would be paint on the walls. <laughs> so you know. <laughs> It's just a very life shortening experience if I go anywhere near an airbrush. Um, <laughs> if people have listened along today and said, "Right, this all sounds fantastic," yeah, where can we find you on the internet webs? First of all, the Kickstarter. What's the date it launches on? It launches on the thirtieth of March, uh, three p.m. Thirtieth of March. So it might have already so- launched. I don't know when you're um, going to get this I'm out. I'm going to try. I'm going to try, and I'm going to try and edit this as quickly as I possibly can to get it out as quickly as I possibly so can. So I'll give you a few. Um, and going, that was, that's a so challenge. Either, it launched just yesterday. Uh, it launched two days ago. <laughs> it's going to launch tomorrow. <laughs> so there you go. You've got to uh, we'll, we'll edit the hell out of that. But yeah, anyway, 30th of March. It's currently the 28th of March. So uh, Thursday, 28th, 3 p.m. UK time. Um, it's going to be ready for about 16 days. Uh, so, and you're going to get in extra toys every day. That's uh, the, the the campaign's up. Some days even two toys, uh, and that's going to just search Dungeon Saga Origins Kickstarter. I'm sure you'll find it. We'll put the links in the show notes. We'll put yeah, the links in the show look notes so everybody can just click right on. The one they can that. click when they're listening because there'll be show notes so they can click so they can go yeah, straight on the nice, mobile phone nice. and do it kind of that way. If people want to find you on the yeah. internet webs, Mr. Renton, oh, okay. where do you, where can they find you and Mantic on the internet webs? So, so manticgames.com is our interwebby net story thing so mantagames.com is a good one that gives you, that will get you everywhere else you need to go 
Cool. Um, that obviously, when we're live with the Kickstarter, that'll have there. There's the Armada stuff on there. It's going to link out to the companions. They can go build armies. We've got the um, that's going to link off to a company called Warhall, who's built a Armada tabletop simulator with all the ships in it. So you can actually just you try the game before you play it on your computer. You can you yeah. can actually put an army in your companion app, send it to Warhall, and then when you open your gaming table, bang, there it is. So we're just working with some wonderful people and, and, and you know, you can try the game before you apply. We've all got free rules for Armada and for everything, Ambush, Kings of yeah. War, on the website. Yeah. You can download the free tr- get the trying rules. We just want people to try our games, give them a try. And then Facebook, we're on Instagram if you're doing the pretty things. I'm on Facebook, usually losing my hat or uh, making you guess where I currently am because I get to travel with my job. So I take pictures and say, guess where Wally is. And uh, so Facebook's a good place to connect and um, and we have our socials going up on there. So we will put all those links in the show notes so that we have got notes to show. And if you want to keep an eye on what we're up to, then just go to the internet webs and search for We're Not Wizards and you'll find us in all all those kind of places where you should really be which is the bright and sunny side of the street with me so we're on facebook and twitter and instagram and we've got our blog which is we're not wizards tabletop.com and we've got our uh, website where you can find all the podcasts which is we're not wizards.com and everywhere else which is wonderful and fantastic if you've listened along tonight and you like what you've listened to then please consider going to your podcast catcher of choice and giving us a rating or a review. If you are going to be giving us a rating or a review, especially on the Apple podcast, consider giving us... Well, no. Don't give us one star because it kind of makes me sad. But at the same time, don't give us ten stars because it does make me big-headed. So give me something <laughs> in the middle, like a five, because it's in the middle, it is average, and I'm just that little bit average. But the person <laughs> who's not been average is rather wonderful... Rather fantastic, Mr. Ronnie Renton. Thank you very, very much for coming along and guesting, Mr. Renton. And there's only two more things to do. Right. The first thing is to remember that we're many things, but we're not wizards. (laughs) Are we wizards, Ronnie? Of course we're wizards. (laughs) Right, okay. All right, we're not wizards. Damn it, I ruined it. Definitely gonna. Right, okay, that's it. That's fine. And the second thing is to say say goodbye. Say goodbye to... It's a goodbye from Ronnie. Say goodbye, Ronnie. Say goodbye, Ronnie. Goodbye, Ronnie. I keep screwing them all up, don't I? I've been so good. And just, just absolutely messed up. Do you know what I should say? Do you know what I should say? And it's, it's a good night him. from me. It's goodbye from me. It's a good night from me. <laughs> and it's goodbye from him. <laughs> and until the next time, stay safe, roll sixes. And um, if you want to know the origin story of some things, some things don't bother. Like Wolverine Origins, which isn't very good. But apparently, Dungeon Saga Origins is very good indeed. So check it out. Have a dive. Have a delve. And until the next time, goodbye. A wizard is never linked. Is he early? He arrives precisely when he means to.